Hello, I'm Grant, and welcome to the Second Plate Cooking Show. Today, I'm going to talk some more about eggs. Particularly, I'm going to be doing scrambled eggs, which seems pretty simple, but I wanted to make a show where I could say, go through a bunch of like small little things that I had learned or had seen or just uh, now understand about how to like make much nicer scrambled eggs that I wish I had uh, been doing all along. So this is going to be a show of not how to make scrambled eggs, because I'm sure essentially everyone has, and you probably made scrambled eggs when you intended to make, say, an omelet or something. But I'm going to go through and list a bunch of different ways you can kind of improve it, as well as two different kinds of scrambled eggs you can make based off what type of meal you're going for. If you're going for a simple breakfast, you can throw it together really quickly before work, or if you want more of a rich, creamier um, scrambled egg that can kind of stand on its own, that doesn't need vegetables alongside it. You can just make it really fancy for, say, a brunch. So this is second plate, and let's get cooking. The first thing I want to cover is, this is something I thought was just neat, and it wasn't until recently that I kind of looked into the science behind it, but it's uh, that you should salt your eggs before you cook them. Ideally, you want to salt them about 15 minutes before you cook the eggs. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going right here. I'm going to be, be making two kinds of scrambled eggs. One is going to be the very fluffy, kind of a dry kind. And the other is going to be the really creamy, wet kind. So I'm just going to crack about two eggs, I think is going to be pretty good for this, into these two bowls. And then I'm going to salt and then whisk them. Another little tip as I'm doing this, I found as many times as anyone has, I've gotten the shell into my eggs. And the way I found that is the best way to get them out is just to use the rest of the shell as just like a scoop. I'm sure there's a science behind it about how the uh, inside the egg doesn't like stick or move around the shell, but it's way easier than trying to get in with like a spoon or a fork and fish that out. It's really just something simple and you always have it right there because you just cracked the egg, unless you've literally destroyed it. So I'm gonna go ahead and salt this. This salt's a little coarse. I usually do say for about three eggs, maybe under a tablespoon, maybe a little bit less. It's enough that you want there to be a difference in the eggs, but you don't really want it to affect the final flavor of them. Like that's gonna come later. But uh, essentially we need, we need the salt to dissolve. And what that's gonna do is as the salt dissolves into the eggs, they're gonna become a darker yellow color. And it helps them become uh, fluffier more than anything. It's, I'm not, again, exactly sure about what goes on in the egg, but it's something where it's, it's very easy and it leads into what I would consider like the next main thing I want to cover is for the first type of egg we're going to be making, the, the fluffy dry one, I'm going to be mixing it with veggies. I'm going to be using cheddar, cheese, shredded. I'm going to be using ham. And then I'm going to also probably be using some spinach. Well, when you ever make ingredients with eggs, oh, also a leak, you should always cook the ingredients ahead of time just because, and this is particularly true for omelets, if you just throw the eggs on, start cooking the omelet, and then fold it, you're not gonna have enough time for the ingredients themselves to cook. And that's nice because then this pairs itself very well with these where I want this to kind of get ready and sit and wait while I prep everything else. So what this is gonna be is, one of this is going to be my fluffy, one's gonna be the creamy. I'm gonna leave the creamy as is for right now because I don't need to mix it. And I'm just going to set this over to the side and I'm just going to cover it up. What it's gonna do is it's just going to kind of take on a deeper yellow. If you wanted, you could mix, you could put pepper in now, but it's just a small little optimization. Cool. I am going to be adding milk to this. One thing I'm gonna be covering over the entirety of this little show is the different additives you can put in your eggs. I was looking into this a lot recently for the show and my preferred is milk, but you can also add water, which is something I wasn't aware of. Like, I mean, I know you could, but I didn't realize that actually helped the eggs. And what it does is it dilutes the flavor a little bit, but it comes out fluffier. However, the more additives you put in, the longer the eggs are gonna cook. Because the actual process of the eggs becoming solid, it's more than just getting them to the right temperature. They, it needs to be at that temperature and basically chemical reactions need to occur. And I believe it's essentially the proteins in the egg kind of like forming onto themselves. And the more uh, things you put in the egg, the longer that's going to take. So if you want really quick eggs, don't add anything. But if you want more flavorful eggs, then add water, add milk, and we'll get on to the others later. So I'm just going to, again, set this off to the side, have it covered so it can, 
I don't want to use the term age, but essentially the salt's going to dissolve. Next, I have my leak. These are, these are cool, these are fun. This is like the stereotypical thing you would see a character in a show buying in a grocery store. They're essentially just giant green onions. I'm going to slice off that root. Go ahead and take off the top, wherever I feel is appropriate. And then I'm going to cut it into rings. So let me just kind of prune this. Looks like I got some of this. Good. And what I'm going to also be doing is I'm going to be cleaning this. Because what's kind of annoying about these is there's so many layers. It's not like an apple where you can just rinse the outside, ideally. Instead, I want to let it soak and kind of, not whisk it, but wash it around a little bit for lack of a better word. Cool. So again, I usually just like to pick out anything that's not up to par. Having used this so far, these give you plenty left over, which is interesting because like, one of the reasons I started using green onions so much, which is the smaller version of these, is I didn't have this issue of, man, I have enough onion for 20 recipes. The green onion, you can get like, oh, give me like two stalks. And I, I've come full circle, and now I have a ton of green onions and leeks in my kitchen. And it's just like, by making the food better, it made my shopping harder. Cool. So I'm just going to kind of cut these down. I'm trying to cut up these little rings. And as you just kind of agitate them, they fall apart. Again, I've said this plenty of times on the show, but the finer you cut them, the more the flavor is going to come out, which might not be what you want. But the less you're going to actually have that moment where you bite into one, and you're like, oh, that's an onion. I can like really taste the flavor. Instead, if you get them really fine, like five more to do something crazy like puree it or blend it, then the entire thing is just going to taste super oniony. So get these pretty good. Then I'm going to pull out, I just have a little bowl and a strainer. I would normally do this ahead of time so that you can just know it's clean. I like to personally, I just clean my veggies when I get them home from the grocery store. And then I just keep them in, like say, Tupperware, so I know that they are still clean. But that's not always a thing, so I'm just going to pour some water over it. Particularly with this, you have a strainer, an easy, uh, an easy way to do this would just be running under the sink. I just call it out. It's like those little things that knowing like a good way to do something versus if you were trying to literally, I don't know, I guess you could peel it and then you could try to wash every little leaf of the leek. That's just not worth it. So let me just kind of rinse these. Cool. And should be. I'm going to be cooking these ahead of time. I'm going to be using one pan. That's the other nice thing about eggs, right, is everything can kind of just go in one pan, especially for scrambled eggs. And it's very nice. It's very clean. I'm going to get these going again. I like onions on first onions and meats, unless I'm doing potatoes. I've personally never tried potatoes, like country cubed potatoes, in, say, scrambled eggs. but. It's something that I think might be kind of neat. I do potatoes a lot on the show just because like, I buy potatoes by the bag, and you just have so many of those. But it also, it's like so cheap, so why not? Cool. I'm going to get probably a little olive oil in here. And then I'm actually going to add some butter. It's hard to go wrong with breakfast and cooking with butter. They just go so hand in hand with so many dishes. So let's get that butter melting and I'll stir this around while we go prep our next ingredients. I'm a fan of lots of veggies. We may not be using every single bit of veggie, but uh, I feel like that's where all my flavor comes from. So I'll give, you can tell like there's gonna be a lot of veggies for two eggs, but. That's just personally the way I like it. If you want more eggs, which is a really good thing if you would say like a hot sauce, but uh, dial it into however you personally want it. So we're trying to heat these up. They're trying to, basically I'm trying to dry them out more than saute them. That's why I'm not on a particularly high heat. I just set it to low or medium and it can just kind of cook here while I prep everything else and my eggs 
dissolve the salt. All right. Next thing is I have ham. This is just a honey ham. I like getting a big chunk because it just looks good and you can slice it for wherever you need it. I had a pet peeve where uh, when I was a kid and I was, I'd go to like make omelets and stuff and the only thing we'd ever have is deli ham, which works for an omelet because you can fold it, but it's just like a pet peeve I've always had is having deli ham and scrambled eggs. It's just like, it works technically, but it's not as satisfying as a ham steak that's been cubed up like this. I'm just gonna slice into it, like so. For me, it really is just like ham and cheddar. That's really, I feel like, what I go for with breakfast. It's one of the things I think about. And I guess while I'm at it, my uh, preferred toast is sourdough. Although I feel like with many things with breakfast, people really just, they want to have what they grew up with. So that's why people like really like fried eggs, scrambled eggs, even if you might have something more superior, like a basted egg that's like fancy, or eggs benedict. There's something nice about just like really nice, like carefully made scrambled eggs. I'm gonna make our ham. Ham's always great when you actually get it on the grill and you can hear it cooking up. Okay, then we have our bell peppers. So I like bell peppers, they're awesome. I choose red just because it looks good with the other colors in here. and just a tiny bit of spinach. I don't want too much because uh, I feel like in scrambled eggs it overpowers stuff. Like I love spinach in omelets. It is great. But uh, the stringiness I feel like doesn't work as well with scrambled eggs because they are so loose. So I'll just put it a little bit in, but I don't want it to be where I'm fighting to cut each piece of spinach in my scrambled eggs. So I'm gonna let these cook. Okay, and if that's 15 minutes, I'm just gonna let this go for a while to recoup some time because I still have to do the whole other ones as well. So I'm gonna let this cook down until the spinach is wilting. So it looks like the spinach is going pretty good. It's wilting like this, that's what I'm looking for. And also I kinda want this brownness on the ham, like right there. Yeah, that looks good. It's not something where I'm too worried. If you do like that, that kind of caramelization, you can just cook the ham as a ham steak and then carve it up, but it's what I'm particularly looking for and that's kind of the point of cooking these all together. So the next thing I find fairly important is that I am going to remove this from the dish and I am going to add it to a separate bowl for a couple reasons. One is I want to start my eggs alone but two, I want to get the cheese melting. It's one of the reasons I cook it separate is you want the cheese to be able to melt, but if you just add it with the eggs, the eggs will be done before the cheese properly gets all mixed together. So I'm just going to start dumping this in and sift this around. It doesn't have to melt all the way, but it will kind of warm it up and get it going. I will leave it up to you for how much cheese you want to put in. You know, I remember when I worked at that like breakfast shop, I. There's a lot of people who just like, I just want two slices of American cheese and or just like cover it. And that's all they wanted is just eggs and cheese. And that's perfectly fine. But yeah, you can see it start melting. Perfect. And then we're going to take my first eggs and make sure they're still good. And then I'm just going to add them right back on to this. The other reason I like, I'm going to do a fairly low heat for this. The other reason I like doing the vegetables first but in the same pan is I find with eggs preheating the pan is pretty big. Uh, that's not how I learned it, eggs I would say but I do think it's pretty important to make sure it's already hot because then you instantly get this right there where it's forming. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be going around scooping like you do with normal eggs and this is hurting kind of like with cheese and I'm just kind of forming these little curds as I want. And then whenever I see fit, I'm gonna add all my veggies in with it. 
how you serve this is something I totally recommend kind of exploring. I would say my scrambled eggs often are more of a blend between that of a scrambled egg and an omelet. I'm going to go more for scrambled, so I'm going to start chopping this because this is actually a perfect temperature. And then I want to start adding a fair bit of this in alongside it so I can get the uh, nice ham actually soaking into the eggs. Yeah, nothing special, but I feel like these little optimizations are something that has really helped me a lot. But I know if I personally was, had this at my own house, the way I would serve it is I would get all my ingredients out as is, toss them back in the pan, but keep them separate from the eggs, and then serve the ingredients on the plate and put essentially my eggs over top the veggies, not necessarily mixed in. Just because that's how I like it, and then you can get the hot sauce specifically on the eggs because I like hot sauce, and other people do ketchup. But I ideally want them to be a little bit wet, still kind of like this, because if you cook them too much, you'll get this, the brownness from the oil and the butter, which I'm trying not. But also, they'll kind of continue to cook as you take them off the heat, and that's not exactly what I'm going for. So this, definitely not the fanciest looking of the scrambled eggs you can make, but it is just like a really good, it's a really good hanger food or anything like that, where it's just like kind of like nice, greasy, you can throw in whatever you want, it's super easy. And it's something I think more people are familiar with, this type of scrambled egg, where their parents would say whip it together on a Sunday morning or something like that. Okay, the next thing we're gonna go for is we are gonna go for the creamier eggs. So this is I, what I see as something you'd see more at a fancier restaurant, because we're just gonna be using a, basically a lot of fat. So you can see that this has turned a darker yellow. That means the salt's basically salt. And then I am gonna add a couple different things. A little bit of whipping cream. Mainly gonna save that for later. Some more milk. Some pepper already salted, so we don't need to worry too much about that. And then I'm just going to take a fork. If I'm honest, I've actually, this whisk is like the first one I had in my entire life. I've always learned to use a fork. It just, it lends itself very easy to it. So cool. We get that going. And then I think the first major difference is I'm going to actually be, in addition to the milk, and the cream is I'm actually going to be putting butter in the eggs themselves. And that's going to be my main additive. And you can see why it makes them creamier and tastier, but essentially any kind of additional fat is going to be what we're going for with this. We are going to want fairly wet eggs. Is the only way to scrum. They're like rich and wet. Cool, and we got this going here. I'm gonna try and break this up. This is something I just recently started going for with these, but I, I'm intrigued about making these, because this is something you could serve in a nice like little pot, and they can just stand entirely alone. You don't need all the other additives. So I'm gonna really divide these up, because I want them creamy. And then what I'm gonna do as they cook, and we're gonna turn this down, is I want to actually add some more cream. And I want a fairly deep yellow. So let me start mixing this up. So I'm no master of these, and it looks like I'm getting a little bit of the brown, which generally would mean high heat. It's one of the things I've been personally working on. And let's add some milk. Just because uh, eggs are hard. They cook just at many different uh, paces. But that, all that extra fat makes them creamier and juicier. And I think there's something to be said of eggs that you can just serve more as is. And then you can let people put on whatever they want. So actually, honestly, I kind of held back on the cream because I was expecting it to be like a little bit goes a long way. Same with the butter. But actually, based off of how I made this before, I think I held back way too much, because I want them to be wet, whereas they're actually ending up more like that over there. 
But generally, for these, I'm just trying to shred them as much as possible. Keep, I'm going to keep adding a little bit more cream. Maybe take it off the heat a little bit. And then I'm going to add some cheese to these. Really with eggs, I found that it's, eggs are not really how to put like the main food. Really they're a, a platform for other stuff to go in. So like this, like the eggs is not the feature. The feature is going to be the cheese or it's going to be the veggies or basically all the butter and fat in this one. But I think that's kind of interesting. It's kind of like it fulfills a similar role as bread does. Or, you know, you don't eat a sandwich because of the bread. It's just your platform. Yeah, it's starting to come out more. Honestly, as I've worked with eggs, I do think back a lot to like when I worked at that little breakfast shop and how the things that I had thought were just them being like, like simple and frugal and how I actually liked them. Like I was actually surprised how much I enjoyed, instead of getting like really nice shredded cheddar and then say spreading it out in between, I was surprised how much more effective and tasty just throwing like a slab on at the end and letting it melt was because while it's nice to get the cheddar all spread out through everything and you can just taste it, you need a lot to taste it in every bite. Whereas when I have it over top, you don't need that much cheese. It cuts you down on the calories and stuff. And then every time you like bite into it, you just cut off a little bit more and it, it just eats a lot better. Like it's very good about that stuff. We can see we got our yellower, nicer wet eggs. And that's essentially what the cream's gonna do is when you have the uh, fluffiness, that's where it's like very airy and it folds very well. You end up with eggs that are a lot drier for lack of a better word. Not bad, like it sounds like that should be a bad thing, but when you get with the creamier, they are meant to look wet. And since you wouldn't normally cook these back to back, I do end up with a couple, looks like, leaks in here, but that's, that's fine. Just fish those out. It really wouldn't be scrambled eggs if like something didn't go a little odd. I know I was totally in the camp where I would make an omelet and this like, it's tore, it's scrambled eggs now. But I think eggs, like I said, are very kind of similar to bread where I don't think it'll probably take someone like 30 seconds to explain how to make scrambled eggs. But to make really good eggs, really good scrambled eggs, really good fried eggs, there's so many little optimizations you can do. And even then, like, you can make the best eggs ever and people will still want, they'll want it however their, uh, their parents made it. So they might be like, oh no, you need like runny whites or don't use yolks in your scrambled eggs or add more yolks just however they want it. It's just kind of a neat, interesting thing. And I don't think there's any way you can ever really master it. I think I chopped this a little bit too finely as I kept adding it. I would say if I were to do this again, I would commit to adding more of the cream and the cheese earlier, just because I think it, uh, it made a, a difference. Like I think I should have just gone all in and gone crazy. Because I usually don't measure out these stuff. I usually try to like uh, feel it out as I go because I think that's just like in the vein of cooking these things and you, then you don't, if you can learn it that way then you don't have to worry about say, oh I need to add one more egg so that's 50% more eggs, so I need 50% more of this and this and then well I want an egg white, I want more egg whites or I want more egg yolks, it's a whole thing you can get into. I personally, I usually cook with real eggs, I like egg yolks. I know when I worked at that uh, breakfast place I ended up doing a lot of egg beaters, and that's something I would also heavily recommend is egg beaters or egg whites basically in a jar. They work very well, and even if you don't necessarily care about the health benefits, I think it, it adds a lot that you can just grab something and have exactly as much as you want. I know that was something that really affected me and I really liked because when it came to making eggs, I, have, I basically learned that I always want exactly like two and a half. I don't really want three, it's too much. I don't really want two. It's like I want just a little bit more something, hence why I probably add a ton of veggies. But uh, I think that's just a nice little thing to call out for making them really quick and easy and getting the exact amount. Because then you can be like, oh, I want exactly one like half cup of eggs. And that's a very, if you've never done that before, it's a very nice thing for recipes to know the exact amount and not have to rely on 
your eggs. And like sometimes you'll get like a double egg and then it completely throws off your recipe because now you wanted no yolks and now you have two. But it's just something I wanted to explore about throwing out a bunch of different ideas about how you can like vary things and try differently. I heavily recommend, again, salt your eggs before. It does make a difference. It's hard to describe until you've had it and you've done it yourself. But uh, make sure you cook your ingredients beforehand. It really helps you control it a lot better and you can make sure like things like the ham are getting browned the way you want them to. And just uh, try making it different ways entirely. Go for the really creamy egg. Go for the really dry, fluffy, more of an omelet egg. It, there's a lot you can do with it. It's such a simple meal, but I think it's something where it, if you're gonna reuse a lot of ingredients, working with eggs is like a big staple. And it's something I definitely myself, I'm gonna continue like working on and getting fancier and fancier and more and more creative with.